Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks very much for having me here today. Um, regrettably, I too only have 10 minutes, so I'll try and wrap 10 years into 10 minutes as quick as I can for everybody. Um, so, uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> so, I'd like to be able to talk to everyone today about the Green Plan and its origins in Kabarak Fire Station through Dublin Fire Brigade and then eventually as, a, as a, an Irish entity leaving Ireland and travelling around the world. Um, the Green Plan is a new system using behavioural change to tackle climate change, surely what we're all here about today. Uh, it's a grassroots project. It's built on seven themes, which I'll discuss later, two core principles, there's three phases of work, and there's a four-pillar system of uh, definition for real sustainability. Um, most important thing, if I left here today and I asked one favour of you, it's to remember that we need to save money and then use that money to reduce emissions and that helps society. So save the money first. So the problem started uh, in Kabarak Fire Station in 2008. We had disgruntled fire crews who had lost a lot of morale and motivation simply because a new fire station in North County Dublin had opened up. And I've used this term, so I'll use it again. It's a sexy fire station that opened up. And we're in a 40-year-old building that never received a lick of paint. And 50% of our crew are gone with all, all their experience, over 20 years' experience each, and they're replaced by a load of recruits. So it didn't really make for a nice place to work. Uh, the building itself, as I described, was in need of repair and an upgrade. But more importantly, it had things like high energy demand, no insulation, physically sick building syndrome. But because we're your fire service, we just have to keep the show on the road. So kind of any building like that was built at a time when energy dependence was cool. It's OK to need lots of fossil fuel. And designs for buildings, architecture, planning, engineering, everything was built around that concept. Nobody minded because no one needed to mind because we didn't have the education we have now, which lets us know there's a problem. <coughs> Emissions, not just carbon, the word carbon is so overused, it's emissions from all the different activities that we're taking which are the problem and we have to do something about it. So for me, it's hilarious that I'm standing in front of you right now because I had no interest in carbon, carbon emissions, energy or anything else. I just wanted to improve the morale of the fire station. And what happened was, one day I got a cardboard box and I put it on the side of a counter and I put used batteries here. And the whole idea was that if anyone wanted to not put a battery into landfill, into domestic waste, they might join in with me. So it's kind of hilarious how it, how it worked out because within one month the battery box started to overflow. The people who had low morale and low motivation were all doing something. We just didn't know what it was for. There was no EU directive at the time for uh, we waste, so I ended up having to hide batteries all over the fire station. <laughs> And, and people were saying to me, you know, what, what the hell, what, what, what can we do next? And I kind of became this uh, go-to person, or person in the crowd, came up with ideas, and I looked at ideas to, to reduce the amount of waste we sent to landfill. And we started to recycle, and it was brilliant. Everybody was buying in. We were using our own vehicles in our own time when we finish a shift and go to bring centres with waste that's from the station. And you know what? Let management pay for it. That's the normal kind of way people think. But we decided to do something different. I had no recycle bay, though. So as you can see from that last picture, all the waste was getting mixed up into each other, and it was just a disaster. But everybody was buying in. We also had uh, food waste, which goes straight to, to landfill at the time as well. So I kind of came up with all these actions, and I had to give them a name. I called it the Green Plan. And all of a sudden, everybody was very interested in, what's the next project? What's the next project? What can we do? And of course, lots of projects failed, which was brilliant, because I can stand here today with what works and what doesn't work, and how we got to make things work. Um, very interestingly, when we started to recycle waste, if you consider it was just an idea with a battery, we saved €2,064 Euro on the waste bill in the first year. And we, we didn't have to spend that, as in management didn't have to spend it somewhere else. So just our own local uh, shared responsibility for the fire station started paying off. And that was the moment that I realised, if we save money, you know what, we can actually reduce emissions very easily because we've the, we have the spirit to do it because everybody <coughs> loves saving money. Um, 
So that's why I call the green plan the solution to the problem. Uh, so that's the cover, the original, uh, when it started in the fire station. That's 10 year old now. Um, the seven themes as teardrops there are energy, water, waste, biodiversity, transport, society and procurement. And after two years of searching and developing the idea, I found that every action has to affect each theme so that there's a ripple across the entire structure, like a matrix. So this all sounds great. But Dublin Fire Brigade is 150 years old. It's the oldest uniformed fire service in the world. <laughs> So you can't just come along and disrupt things, but actually, that's what happened. Um, so in Kabarak Fire Station, uh, I did uh, what we now call another sexy word, we call crowdfunding. And I told everyone in the fire station, if they could raise capital and give it to me, and I invested it and spent it wisely, I'd promise to give them nothing back, except a better place to work. <laughs> and somehow they said, OK. So I took their money and we invested in Europe's first thermodynamic solar collector panels. What's really exciting about that is that it's something Ireland has way too much of, wind and rain, and those panels love wind and rain, and they use the wind and rain to make hot water. So in the first year, when you connect them to the station, we actually had saved 6,000 euro. And it's just all these, you know, can the, these projects work or not? What happened soon was then the city council got involved and said, Listen, we own the fire brigade and we're delighted with what's happening in Kabarak, but can we pick it up and scatter dust it across the city council? And at that stage, I took part um, in writing Dublin, Dublin City Council's first uh, sustainability plan. But I was very happy that I got the seven themes of the Green Plan to be mirrored by this sustainability report. Now, I don't want to seem fake. I normally slate sustainability reports and I normally have a go off people who make out how good they are. Um, they're usually a glossy, trashy piece of paper, and they're not based on anything. But uh, what was important about that particular sustainability report is that it was the first one by any local authority in Ireland. And for me, a fireman of no third level education, and the, the project I have in my fire station is actually going to be used to help govern the city of Dublin. So I was, I was very proud of it. Um, I just have a little picture of what happened in Kabarak when we went off grid with our energy, uh, our urban wind turbines just to show the completion of the story. So some quick uh, achievements, I'll fly through them. So Kabarak Fire Station is the world's first carbon neutral fire station, verified every which way. Um, we went 92% water reduction, 97% gas reduction, 80% electricity consumption reduction, 100% organic waste, we've domestic waste reduction, we've even five working beehives with firemen trained as the beekeepers. Um, so I think it's fair to say it became a better place to work. We'd eradicated sick building syndrome too. But where it gets really important is if I stop talking about Kabarak and I move on to something much, much bigger, and that's Dublin Fire Brigade as the organisation. So if I was to talk about some positive uh, disruptment. So 44% energy reduction across our estate, which is a really big deal because that's a saving of 11 million euro and that's our money that we pay in our tax to keep your fire service running. And that 11 million was generated from a spend of 3.6 million, which was a ring fence saving fund, which the taxpayer didn't finance. We just used our own energy savings to create the money in the first place. That's the way the green plan works. Um, the sustainability report I mentioned earlier was signed into, into Dublin law, and climate change by Dublin Fire Brigade was recognised as our single biggest threat and as a result, I had to, I suppose, disrupt the business plan and start uh, inserting ways to think climate change as much as think the safety of the people in front of me. So it was a, perhaps the biggest success of the Green Plan so far. Uh, just some quick photographs. You have like fruit grown in an allotment. We have uh, frogs and tadpoles. You have actually food grown on site, uh, honey, lots of honey, bats, and our turbines. Um, some quick traction outside the fire brigade. Um, the Green Plan has now gone into so many businesses and uh, sectors across uh, Europe and outside of Ireland. Um, there's been 23 startups and nine public private partnerships. Um, I actually own three of the startups, so if you can really think about saving money, there's ways to generate money and help your, your family. Um, I've been involved in steering five European Union projects over three years each. Uh, which ended in two European Union directives. And I know Connie Hedegaard, her head was mentioned, was here, but I had the pleasure of her flying over to meet me in Dublin a few years ago and learned firsthand about what we're doing, 
and what we can uh, send on to Europe as best practice. And that's um, a document I'd written for Dublin Fire Brigade and Dublin City Council, which is now referenced as best practice in the EU. Um, so just where we're at now, I'd wrap up and just say, look, you know, it's all about every single person in this room is a change maker, and not just because it's the Citizens' Assembly. It's because every one of us should make a change, because if we believe in something strong enough, we don't know how to get there, but we are the solution to the problem, and this is the best time to come together and do something. Uh, Mulroney in, in County Mayo took on the, the Green Plan and last year, in the last 12 months, was awarded as Ireland's best responsible tourism de destination. The work they've done is just phenomenal. Um, I launched the Turning Ireland Green campaign with the, Mayor of, the Lord Mayor of Dublin and he became the first student of a course that I've given away for free online. Um, it's called the Green Plan Champion for Communities and it teaches you how to reduce your community's carbon footprint. Um, the course is available for free, and so far we've 7,000 people have done it in the last 10 months in uh, 51 countries around the world. And, uh, the 17 towns in Ireland have followed Mulroney, 117, sorry, in the last four months, and our own, say, Climate Change Department has recognised the Green Plan as best practice. And I suppose it's important to tell you all I'm still a fireman and paramedic at Dublin Fire Brigade. Um, so just the last thing I'd finish up on is because every one of us is a change maker and I'd say the Green Plan is removed that we must do something approach and replace it with physical actual actions. So thank you very much.